Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Recently, since I've been spending a lot of time at home, I've been trying to find ways to not just be on my phone or watching TV, so I've been trying to practice watercoloring and drawing and just some relaxing activities that will take my mind off of other things. I recently got a huge box of art supplies from Arteza, so I thought you guys would like seeing some of the things that I got, so let's get started. Here's the giant pile of stuff that I got from Arteza. And by the way, all of the products that I'm showing you today are going to be linked in the description box below. I just love new art supplies. There's nothing that is more exciting than that. So let's get right into it and open all these up. First, I have a pack of black fine liners. I go through fine liners so quickly because I use them to draw in my journal and also just for sketching. And this is a pack of 12 fine liners and they're all the same width, 0.4 that will work for most drawing, writing, and sketching. So it's really nice to have this pack to stock up because those are the pens I usually run through more quickly. Next, I have a pack of real brush pens. These are water-based markers and you can pretty much use them like watercolor markers. So that's why this set actually comes with a water brush for you to be able to blend these out and paint with them. And I got the set of 48 and just look how many beautiful colors there are. I couldn't even fit them in the screen. There were so many, but there's also a pack that goes up to 96 if you want um, an even larger pack. And I think there's a set of like 12 or 24 if you just want a smaller pack as well. But whenever I get one of those smaller packs, I usually end up wishing that I had gotten the larger pack. So that's why this time I just decided to go for the 48 pack. So that way I have all the colors I need right from the start. These pens are really unique in that the tip is a real brush, hence the name real brush pens. So you can see when I demo them later that there are actual bristles in the brush. They're not just like a felt tip marker that a lot of pens are. Next, I have a pack of metallic pens. There are eight different colors in this pack and I love metallic markers. They just give you a nice shine and something a little extra for your drawings. I was really excited to try these out because there are a lot of different colors in the pack as well. I think a lot of times you only see these in like typical metallic colors like silver and gold. So it'll be interesting to see how the different colors for these work. Next, I have a watercolor palette. I was really excited for this one because I've been looking for a new palette for so long. I usually use like more beginner type watercolor palettes and I think this one will be a good intermediate watercolor palette if you're looking to transition into something a little more high quality than a starter palette. This one comes with 36 colors. Again, I think that is plenty to start expanding your color palette and to just make you feel confident that you have all of those colors right off the bat. I really love that this palette came with a swatching little pamphlet that you can fill in yourself. I think swatches are so important. It's so useful for when you're painting. You don't have to keep testing out your colors on the side of your page. I've definitely done that. And I like that just having this palette come with that swatching paper eliminates one step for you to just go ahead and get it done. So this palette comes with a bunch of different pans that are individually wrapped like you see here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unwrap all of these. And I realized that none of them were actually labeled on the palette. And since these pans do move around, what I'm gonna do is cut off the part of the sticker that has the name and code of each color and tape that right back onto the back of the palette. You don't have to do this obviously if you don't want to, but I kind of just like having a reference in case I ever need it in the future or I want to know what color I use to let you guys know what color I use. So I'm just going to go this extra step and do it. And in this palette, those little metal tabs, you can kind of bend them. I was trying to pop them out at first, but you can bend them and then bend them back to put them back in. So that's just a little tip if you get this palette. So here I am snapping them all back into place and moving on to some of the other products I got. I have this watercolor pad, it has 14 sheets in it and I was really excited to try this out because it said that these were 100% cotton. It has this really nice rough texture and I've never used cotton paper before so I'm really excited to see how that's different from regular watercolor paper. And finally, the last product, I have these two giant sketchbooks. I didn't realize how big these were when I ordered them online. These are the 9 by 12 sketchbooks and it comes in a pack of two and each of them has 200 pages. So it's going to take me a long time to get through these guys and it'll really last me a while. I really didn't realize how big and 
thick these would be so I maybe would have gone for a smaller size had I known. The pages are a little bit on the thin side. You can see here that you can kind of see my hand through it so I'm sure these are going to be more for pencil and pen sketches instead of watercolor or mixed media. And I'm just going to go ahead and open up this sketchbook to the first page and just try out some of these markers and pens that I got to see um, both how the pens do and how this sketchbook does. I'm starting off with the fine liner and it writes really nicely. It's a nice solid black um, and the tip feels really stiff so I'm confident that it won't get pushed in like some pen tips do and I think it'll last quite a bit. Next I have the metallic markers and I'm going to try out each of these colors just so that I can see what all the colors look like on paper. I really like that the tips are pretty fine on these. I feel like usually for metallic markers, um, they come in a more rounded tip and it's hard to write with them. Um, but you can see how these have a really nice point on them. What I found with these when I was working with them is that they're actually more of a pearl finish than a metallic. I don't think they have like quite the shine that a metallic marker has, but you can see here they're definitely reflecting light and they are really pretty. I still love pearly markers. I think it's something great to add to your journals and your artwork just to give it a different finish and give it more dimension. So these will definitely do that. I just don't know if I would call them metallic markers. I also found that some of the colors were more pearly and shimmery than others. So for example, you can see here that the champagne one really pops off the page, whereas some of the colors, it's harder to see that shine, um, maybe just because of the color of the pigment. Next I'm trying out the real brush pens, and like I mentioned before, the tips of these are real brushes with bristles, so I'm just pressing down really hard here so that you can see the different bristles in this brush tip. So this is really different from a felt tip marker and it takes a little getting used to if you haven't used a pen like that, but it's really fun to experiment with this. And like I said, they are water soluble so you can use them as watercolor markers. And I think this is a great option if you're a beginner to watercolors because you can get that precision with these pens and go in and get that watercolor look later on. You can also try these with brush lettering, but since it's a real brush, the tip is a lot softer, so you kind of have to keep that in mind, and I find it a little challenging, but if you're really good at brush lettering, then these could be a great option. I was just testing these out with the fine liners here just to see how the fine liner does with other water-based markers. I mainly wanted to see if I could watercolor on top of it and to see if the lines would hold. Um, but you can see here it smudged immediately even without adding water so I definitely will just be using this as like a sketching or writing pen and not really for drawing if I plan to be doing any layering on top of it. Now I'm just playing with the real brush pens a little more and experimenting with adding water to it just to see how it blends out. I'm obviously not using the ideal paper here since like I said this paper is a little thinner. It's not watercolor paper but I still wanted to see what would happen if I added water to this paper because it's nice just to know the limits of your supplies and see if you can push them sometimes. You can see here how the ink blends really nicely. You can get a really nice transition to a light color and I think these will be really great on an actual watercolor paper. And here I'm also experimenting with blending two different colors into each other just to see how those colors would interact and I'm pretty pleased with how how these blended even though they are pretty different colors they blended pretty nicely I did find that this paper buckled adding water to it which is not a surprise but like I said I'll mostly just be using this for writing and sketching so that's okay I also brought in that watercolor paint pan just to do a little um, test on this paper and I colored in really large areas with a lot of water again just testing out the limits of the sketchbook to see how it performed but after I finished and I turned the page over you can really see how much the paper buckles so not ideal for this situation but I will be showing you how this performs on the watercolor paper I got as as well. I thought I would just go ahead and do all of my swatches for the watercolor palette in the swatch book that it comes with. There are instructions on the back of this as well that tell you how to do it properly if you've never done swatches before. So you start off with water in one color and then really intense pigment in the other corner and you kind of just blend them with water so that you get this nice uh, ombre transition and you can see all of the different in-between stages of the color that you can get. So this is a little bit tedious work but it's so helpful in the long run and you'll be so glad that you did this. And it's just a really great way to play with a new set of paint when you first get it because you don't really know how it's going to behave right at the very beginning so it's really nice just to dip your toes into it a little bit and the paper that this swatch book comes with is really nice and thick too it's not like cheap flimsy paper and it has a little bit of a texture on it as well so you can kind of get a better look at what it looks like on actual watercolor paper 
So here's what my swatches look like when they're done. You can see I actually have one blank because my watercolor palette accidentally came with two of one color, which is not a big deal. There are already so many colors and I'm sure this is just a fluke, but just wanted to let you know that that's what happened with me. And the other thing I noticed is that these pans kind of move around in the palette a little bit, um, even though I tried to tighten those metal tabs. So that was just a little thing to take a note of. It's not a super big deal. I just wish that they were a little bit tighter in there. After I completed my swatches, I wanted to go ahead and to test this out on the watercolor paper as well because I was really excited to try that out. And you can see a little clip here. I found that the cotton paper absorbs a lot of water, so I had to keep dipping my brush back into my paint to add to the paper. But because it's so absorbent, I found that it also held up really well to a lot of water. So you can keep layering stuff on and I didn't find that it buckled too much even though I added a lot of water to these little landscape pieces that I was doing. And because it's so absorbent, it's really good for doing wet on wet watercolor techniques. So you can see here when I dip my brush into a wet area, that paint really just spreads all on its own immediately and I think it's just so fun to watch and you can get some really nice looks with that. The other thing with that though is because you're putting so much water in order to move the paint on this paper, I had to wait in between all of my layers to add more colors if I wanted it to be a more defined edge and not bleed directly in. I really had to let my wash of blue sky dry for like 10 minutes before I went in with those trees because if I didn't, the trees would just blend into the sky and turn into like a blurry mark instead of being more defined if that makes sense. Um, but these are just my initial observations. I'm sure I'm going to figure out how to play with this set a little more. So once I figure all that out, hopefully I can do a tutorial for you guys and show you a little bit more of a how-to for how to use this set. But anyway, those are all of my first impressions of all of these supplies. If you guys wanna check them out, I have everything that I showed you here listed down in the description box below. And you can also check out Arteza's YouTube channel because they already have tutorials for how to use all their products. And I'm hoping to do more tutorials with these in the future so make sure you're subscribed if you want to see more of that thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you again next time bye